All right, good. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is John Dresner. I'm a sports medicine physician at the University of Washington. I'm also a team physician with the Seattle Seahawks. And at the University of Washington, I'm the director of our Center for Sports Cardiology. Um, I think in the wake of what happened on a Monday night, I just wanted to be available to answer some questions about the emergency planning and preparations that the Seattle Seahawks make, as well as within the NFL. With what happened Monday, obviously, as a scenario you never hope to deal with, but how are you guys? What do you do to prepare for that? You know, there's lots of preparations that all of the teams throughout the NFL take. Um, been really impressed with the emergency action plans um, that are required by the league. As a, as a team, this is something that we prepare for and we plan for. No one wants an emergency to happen on the field. There's a variety of different on-field emergencies that can occur, and sudden cardiac arrest is one of them that we do prepare for, and we hope never, never happens. Um, every team in the league is required to have a written emergency action plan. Every team in the league is required to practice and rehearse their response to an on-field emergency, which includes different scenarios. It includes players going down prone, going down supine, face up, with different equipment, and potentially with different medical emergencies. So we practice this here at the facility every year before the season starts. We practice at the stadium with all emergency personnel there. We have our paramedic team there. We have our uh, emergency room physicians and our airway management physicians uh, who are there to help us and assist in, in case of an emergency. So we're all practicing and communicating what might happen if we need to do this um, in real time. Um, in addition, before every game, we meet with the visiting team, or if we're on the road with the, with the home team, with all the personnel who are there on the sidelines. So as you know, there's a large group of, of medical personnel um, that take care of the athletes during game time. We have our incredible athletic training staff, team physicians, our airway physicians, um, we have neurotrauma consultants, et cetera. Um, and everyone is meeting before the game, that 60-minute medical meeting, to talk about what might happen. And we identify and we have that face-to-face -face time. And for me personally, it's important to know who I'm going to be working with in case there is an emergency. So getting to know who that airway management physician is on the road, shaking their hands, seeing them face-to-face, -face, knowing who I'm going to call for, for help uh, is important. And we do that before every game. Even though the Seahawks and the league have these incredible resources where we want to make safety our first priority and that, that, that really is the safest environment to play in. Sudden cardiac arrest can still happen at any level. They can still happen in youth and school sports and out in the community with less resources. And even though there's less resources, survival is still possible. You need to recognize SCA and have defibrillators available. And if you are able to recognize SCA and you have defibrillators in our schools, survival rates can be quite high. So this is not a unique circumstance to, to the NFL or to the Seahawks to be prepared. I think being prepared is a responsibility of, of all the communities that sponsor organized sports. Certainly, football is a violent sport, but what can trigger an event like this during the game? Sure. Um, Sudden cardiac arrest in general in young athletes is caused by underlying heart conditions that they usually don't know about. Um, structural heart disease such as cardiomyopathy or electrical heart diseases that can cause uh, the heart to go into abnormal rhythm potentially during exercise. In the NFL, of course, athletes are, are heavily screened for underlying heart conditions. Um, there are some traumatic causes of sudden cardiac arrest. Um, like commotio cordis, which is blunt trauma to the chest. In this particular incident on Monday night, I, I think we don't know what the cause was. Um, everyone has seen the hit, um, but we don't know what the cause is, and I think it's, it's um, inappropriate to speculate if this was trauma-induced or from something else. Um, and I know that the, the great medical staff at the University of Cincinnati in coordination with Buffalo Bills will, will do their best to figure all this out. John, your shoes, or more specifically, the shoes of the doctors and the trainers there in Cincinnati the other night, when they have to sprint onto the field and immediately assess what's happening, because the faster they do, the more likely it is that this young man's going to be saved. How difficult was that at that very moment, do you think, to make that assessment that this is what we're dealing with? I think it's really difficult. Um, and 
I didn't see on TV much of what the response was, but you could see that very quickly they ran out, they recognized that there was an emergency and that they were working together in a, in a coordinated fashion. I think sorting out why an athlete has collapsed and is unresponsive is challenging, especially in a sport that can, that can have head and neck injury. There's an assumption we make in sports medicine that when an athlete is collapsed and unresponsive, you have to think of cardiac arrest as a possibility and then move forward in your resuscitation protocol. Um, so in this instance, I'm, I'm, I have uh, utmost confidence that that's what happened um, and they were able to resuscitate him. John, how rare are the instances of cardiac arrest and unconsciousness, non-responsiveness during an athletic event? Yeah, so, so talking more in general, sudden cardiac arrest in, in young athletes, um, different sports are have different risks, but in general, if you look at like college athletes, the risk is about one in 50,000 per year, and in high school athletes, about one in 80,000 athletes per year may have a, a sudden cardiac arrest. There are risk groups that seem to have a higher risk, so male basketball players have the single highest risk of any sport in the U.S., um, male football players and soccer players. So those three sports alone make up about 70% of cases of cardiac arrest across the U.S. You mentioned this is not unique to the NFL. And you mentioned that having AEDs, things like that. How important at the school level is that for schools to be prepared? It's a must. It's a must. Schools have to be prepared. They have to have AEDs. If you're wondering if your school is prepared, if your school has AEDs, if your children play sports, go, go look for the defibrillators. Go ask your school. Talk to them about how you can help. Um, it's not just having the devices available. They have to be accessible at the time of an emergency. And you have to have people who recognize that there is a cardiac arrest and when to use it. And that circles back to training, emergency planning and not just in healthcare professionals, but coaches who are responsible for our kids who are playing sports. In, in the wake of something like this, is there a need to reassure like the players of the Seahawks today what you do have in place and kind of let them know that this is kind of what we do and how we do it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we met this morning um, with the team and, you know, Coach Carroll does a, a great job bringing the team together. I'm not sure there's a, there's a, um, a roadmap on how, on how to do that in the wake of such an event. Um, but I think it was a very powerful meeting uh, with the players. And, and I had an opportunity to talk to the players about what we do um, as a Seahawks medical staff to prepare with our athletic trainers, with our paramedics, with our um, airway physicians on the sideline, how we rehearse and how the same way they run plays, we are training for the what if, just in case there is an emergency. Building off that, was there anything about how the, the Bills team of doctors handled Monday night that caused you and your team to reassess or just make sure that the processes you have in place are up to speed? Sure. There's absolutely nothing that the, the, the response on the field Monday night did to make me second guess what we're doing. I, I think the response was terrific. But any of these events should make everyone press pause and think about, do we have everything in place? Is there anything that we can do better? And so I think learning from that event, since this is the first cardiac arrest in the NFL in, in modern time, you know, I think is really important. There's probably a lot to learn from this over time that we can share as medical professionals. What can you tell us about the, the players, how they were in that meeting? Are there a lot of questions? Yeah, I think that's probably better for, for Coach Carroll to talk about than, than for me. Again, I, I just took the opportunity to talk about what we do as a medical staff and how we're prepared. Hey, John, um, you talked about the medical staff. One of, it looked like on TV, personnel that really made a quick diagnosis was the referees, right? They looked and then brought that on. How do you have contact with that, with them as part of the team? Or I know they get their own training. What's that relationship like? Yeah, I think, you know, the 60-minute meeting has before the games has really facilitated, I think, better communication between the officials on the field and the medical staff. So, for instance, if there's a medical timeout and they need to walk a player over, they know who they're handing it to, um, the player over to someone on the team medical staff. Uh, and I think more and more, you know, the safety of the players is is everyone's top priority. And, and the, the, the lead officials at the 60 minute medical meeting, that's what they say. And, and I believe it. And in this instance, um, you know, I think everyone responded as quick as they could. Anything else?
Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.